Welcome. In this video, I'd like to establish two things about a triangle. Namely, for any triangle, I claim there exists a circle that circumnavigates that triangle perfectly. That is, there's a circle that passes through each of the three corners of the triangle in a perfect manner, unlike what I've drawn that's looking egg-shaped, but I claim there's a perfect circle that circumnavigates the triangle. And the second thing I'd like to establish in this video is that inside the triangle, one can also fit just perfectly another circle this is, you know, not much better, <laughs> that a circle that just touches is just tangent to each of the three sides of the triangle from the inside. That is, I'd like to prove that a circumcircle exists for any triangle as well as an incircle exists for any triangle. And the way I'm going to do that is use equidistance. And I do this uh, with my ninth grade kids in my geometry class. Here's how equidistance could be of help. First of all, what do I mean by equidistance? Well, Imagine I had two schools, school A and school B. School A for the advanced kids, school B for the boisterous kids. And I suppose this county has a particular rule that if you live closer to school A than you do to school B, you must attend school A. If you live closer to school B than you do A, you must go to school B. So my question is, with such a policy, is there any confused kid about which school to go to? Well, most people realize very quickly that yes, the kid that lives right at the midpoint of the line segment between these two schools is confused. She doesn't know which school to go through to. It doesn't take much longer to realize that actually there are many more kids that are confused with the school policy. In fact, any line on the perpendicular bisector, oof, gosh, I can't see to draw well today, of the line segment AB is confused. That is, I could quickly prove, I bet, that a distance of this point on the perpendicular bisector is called little a, school a, equals its distance from b. I can prove a equals b. And that's not too hard. If the, uh, if this, internal distance here I'll call h is, is h, and these two distances are the same, and I'll call them both x, then a quick Pythagoras the theorem tells me b is given by this formula, a is given by the same formula, so indeed a equals b. In fact, you can prove these are the only kids that are confused between the two schools. For example, if I'm not on the perpendicular bisector, another application of Pythagoras shows that since they both have the same h here, but since I'm away from the midpoint, this y1 is definitely different from this y2. I bet Pythagoras' formula now shows that distance to a is definitely not equal to the distance to b. So basically the result I want to use at the present is that if I am equidistant from two points, I must lie on the perpendicular bisector of those points. It's just Pythagoras' theorem. Well, a triangle has three points. So my question now becomes, if I'm given three schools, a for the advanced kids, b for the boisterous kids, and c for the charming kids, is there a kid that's ultimately confused about which school to go to? That is, is there some kid that is equidistant from all three schools simultaneously? Well, what I'll do here is I'll draw a triangle connecting these three schools, if my pen will let me do it. Du -du 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 -du. And you might begin to say, well, there's at least some kids that are confused between schools A and B. In fact, what we just proved, any kid that's on the perpendicular bisector of A and B is confused. And there's some kids that are confused between schools A and C. Any kid on the perpendicular bisector of AC is also confused, but just between A and C. So over here, these kids are confused between A and B. Now these two perpendicular bisectors do in fact meet somewhere. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do -do -do. Back again. Do -do -do -do. Looks like they meet there. And let me ask you something about that kid. Well, whoops, don't need the colors here. This kid is on the green line. This kid is equidistant from A and B. So if, it's R mile, if this kid is R miles from R, she's also R miles from A. But this student also lies on the perpendicular bisector of AC, the dark blue line. So she's R miles from A, she must also be R miles from C. In which case, she's R miles from all three schools. Well, that's great, because if I now draw a circle of radius R centered about that point, I've now proven that that circle will pass through the point A, the radius is still R, will pass through B, the radius is still R, it will pass through C, and I've just established that this triangle does indeed sit inside a circle. And this work will work for any triangle, and uh, that will prove that any triangle does indeed sit inside a circle perfectly. Now, I, have to be, I have to qualify myself, a little challenge for you, which I'll do on the side. What if I had a very obtuse triangle? Where is this center of the circle that apparently goes through all three vertices? You might want to play with that on your own. 
All right, any case, that just uh, establishes that we have a circumcircle for triangle. Now, what about this incircle? Well, let's use equidistance again, but equidistance of a different kind. Uh, I'm going to ask now, suppose I'm given two lines. Before I had two points, now I'm going to have equidistance between two lines. Can I find, describe the points that are equidistance from these two particular lines? First of all, let me draw them. There's one line, there's another line. What does it mean to be equidistant? This point P is equidistant from those two lines. I guess I'd measure my distance by coming in along a perpendicular segment. That's length A. If this is length B. To be equidistant, I would like A to equal B. Well, is there a special location for this point P? Well, the answer is yes. Let's draw a line from the vertex of the two intersecting lines through P. If A equals B, then I have this length equals this length, this length equals this is equals itself, and a quick Pythagoras shows me this length equals that length. So by SSS, these two triangles are similar, which means all angles match, in particular this angle here matches this angle here. So this point P is on the angle bisector of the two lines. And conversely, if I have a point on an angle bisector, I'll take the angle bisector first, I bet if I draw these perpendicular segments, I can say by AA, those two triangles are similar. They share a common side length, therefore the scale factor is 1, so this A does equal this A here, and we do a equidistance. All right, so to be equidistant from two lines means you need to lie on the angle bisector of those lines, is what we just established. I went very fast, but if you go to my geometry book, volume 1, that I work with uh, kids with, it's all there in this glorious slow detail. So back to our triangle. Here's three lines that doth a triangle make. If I draw the angle bisector, say from this vertex, as yonder, and the angle bisector from this vertex, as so, they will intersect somewhere. Let's look at that point. Well, that means that point being on the green angle bisector is equidistant from these two sides of the triangle. So that's R inches, that's also R inches, despite my picture. And being on the blue angle bisector means it's equidistant from the top and the right-hand line. So if it's R inches from the top line, it's also R inches, very bad picture, from the right-hand side. But now look at that special point. It is R inches from each of the three sides of the triangle. In which case, if I were to draw a circle of radius R about that center, that gives me a circle, ooh, bad, 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 but in theory I'm correct, that passes that just touches each of the three sides of the triangle internally. And therefore, I have established that an incircle to a triangle exists. Now, a little puzzle. Doo -doo -doo -doo. A famous result in, uh, in uh, trigonometry says that the law of sines, is the law of sines, sorry, that if I have a side A with angle A opposite it, a side B with angle B opposite it, and side C with angle C opposite it, that the ratio A over sine of A equals b over sine of b equals c over sine of c. Well, in my video on the law of sines, I prove that is the diameter of the circumcircle. That common ratio is this. So then my challenge for you is, what can you say about the diameter of the incircle? What's that got to do with the original triangle? Is there a formula for it? Go for it. Thanks very much.